Okay, welcome. I was going to talk about the CEB press today, but I need to back up a little bit and put some more context into our work so that future episodes will make more sense. This discussion stems from a comment on a very un important topic of appropriate technology, which was comment number nine on the Distillations Part 1 blog post, which you can see. Comment dealt with what was perceived as factory farms, overly high reliance on technology for solutions to sustainability issues. This gets into several points worth exploring, so bear with me here, please. So first, my response to critiques of Luddite nature is that we do not favor alienation for compensation. so-called current predominant paradigm of modern-day employment. Such alienation is a presupposition in Luddite critique, but we are striving for much more than that, a much more evolved state of existence, the integral approach of becoming truly productive human beings, whom we call integrated humans. This requires both high skill and appropriate equipment, which enables the so-called high-tech self-providing that Friedhof Bergman's new work movement has proposed. And I'm not talking about industrial technology-based self-providing, which is in itself a contradiction in terms, because industrial technology requires a central support apparatus. I am talking about post-industrial technology, which can be self-fabricated, and open source-wise, it's transparent. Then the question arises, which technology is appropriate? Our response is all technology should be open sourced, optimized, and integrated into, into ecological wholes. If the technology does not show promise of being integrated into such ecological wholes, it should be left alone. If technology is open sourced, then it becomes transparent enough that people can make choices about it through their own discretion not that of ad men, not of publicity, marketing. The key is to have choice, which we do not have today because the only available industrial technology option does not really constitute a choice. To back up, I keep talking about a technology base for evolving to freedom. This may sound offensive to the humanist, I clarify that our goal is entirely humanistic and that an in integral life, i.e. the integrated humans that we talk about, of merging one's true needs with their reality is our primary goal. This is a game played on the spiritual and psychological field. Yet from a pragmatic perspective, how can we become integrated humans if we're involved in crap jobs and immersed in unhealthy environments? These issues must be addressed before widespread access to personal evolution can happen. This is why we focus on the hardware prerequisites which promote enterprising high productivity that enables people to sever the, their reliance on the unhealthy environments. This is our present two-year phase. We want to be done with it and move on. That's why we keep telling everybody to drop what they're doing now and produce the option of a viable, highly productive open source economic system, which helps those with higher aspirations than a nine to five to pursue their dreams. This has to be done once and then the tools become available. So subscribe to this work. These are not just ideals. We have a program for action. We will publish a separate episode on a different ways that you can benefit directly from the infrastructures that we're creating at Factory Farm. Okay, to return to the discussion on the appropriate technology issue, which is more appropriate, a broad fork or a rototiller? My response is, is that a broad fork should be used for broad forking and a rototiller should be used for rototilling. The discretion is left up to the user. As far as ourselves, 
we may use the rototiller for now until we develop the more advanced agricultural spader to feed a village in the making of 30 people. If it can be shown that we can produce a 100% complete diet with a broad fork while allowing for as much freedom time while allowing for much leisure time to pursue more global aspirations, then I'm all for it. I'm saying that with an open mind. I would be really, it would be really useful to perform the following experiment. Take the open source live, t live track tractor with its agricultural implements. Show the most effective method for producing 100% food for 30 people while using live track assist. Next, take the same 30 people and arm them with hand tools, possibly draft animal power. Give them the same task of providing 100% diets for each of them year-round. Then see who ends up having more free time, even if we include the time and energy to produce the life track infrastructure itself. So here we're talking about engaging primarily perennial integrated open source agroecology food systems in both cases. It may be possible that with good design, the manual route is just as effective. But it is likely that if a lifetime design power assist is available, it will probably result in more leisure time. Such an experiment is worth documenting, with technology maintenance requirements internalized in that analysis. I cannot help but add, if we have the mechanical power equivalent of 50 horses, or the equivalent of 100 slaves, and the techniques and skill to harness that power with wisely without human rights abuses of slave plantations isn't absolute prosperity the only possible outcome? That's the experiment we're engaging. Are we missing something in our experimental design? We're open to comments on this. Observation shows however that most people with small tractors the size of the 55 horsepower life track do not live in mansions. This shows me that somewhere along the line our technology system has failed. And this failure, this failure is what we're trying to address at Factory Farm. I have not yet added fuel, fiber, small industry, education functions that will be engaging as part of our economic ecology here. When we consider an, an integrated economy, I cannot see how our 30-person team will prosper without so some high performance tools. So in conclusion I say it's time for civilization to befriend its machines and show mutual respect.